What if you took the top dividend stocks from the S&P 500, tossed in some mayo, lettuce, and tomato, and wrapped it into an ETF burrito? Well, on today's episode of ETF Battles, we've got an audience-requested dish-up from two such S&P 500 dividend-focused ETFs. It's ProShares versus Global X. So grab a chair, grab your hot sauce, because Chef DeLegge is serving up dividend ETF burritos for everyone. Stick around. You're watching ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and thank you for being here. If you're a new viewer, be sure to hit the subscribe button. This is the place where we get together to analyze and judge ETFs versus each other. And if you've got a certain contest that you'd like to see, send me your matchup requests in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. We could do double, triple, quadruple headers. Be sure to include your exact ETF ticker symbols. Now, by way of reminder, hit the description section below. I've got links to our program judges, so get in touch. Also, I've got a link to our program sponsor, Direction. Get in touch. And finally, we've got viewer resources with download links to my new audio and ebook and other goodies, so don't miss it. Today's ETF contest was requested by a viewer named OMJNJ, and it's a dividend focused contest between. NOBL, Noble, from ProShares, going up against QDiv from Global X. Now, while both funds focus on S&P 500 dividend stocks, there are some slight variations, as you're about to find out. So thank you, OMJNJ, for the great ETF battle suggestion. Be sure to hit the comment section below to claim your prize. You get your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. Judging today's ETF bash is Tony Dong. He's a lead ETF analyst at ETF Central, and we've got David Durkin, who runs the ETF Focus newsletter and ETF research at thestreet.com. Guys, great to see both of you. Welcome back. Thanks for having me, Ron. Yeah, good to be back, Ron. So our four battle categories are going to be cost, exposure, strategy. We've got performance and yield combined, since this is a dividend contest. And then we've got the mystery category, where you, our judges, can choose any factor or thing that you think is crucial to today's contest. Keep in mind, our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel that there's a better choice elsewhere, or they can just opt for a split decision. It's up to them. I've got the scorekeeping duties. At the end of the show, we'll declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So let's kick, kick things off with the first category, cost. Tony, please get us started. So one of the biggest sources of controllable risk that you can address as an investor is keeping costs low because these directly reduce the long-term net returns of your fund. And it's a pretty clear sweep here. QDiv charges 20 basis points or 0.2% uh, a year, which for a $10,000 investment works out to about $20 in fees. In contrast, Noble is much higher at 35 basis points or 0.35. So in the thieves realm, Global X takes the cake here. And this is particularly surprising for me because when you think Global X, you usually think covered calls and thematic, not low cost dividend funds. But that's precisely what they're offering here. And I quite like it. That's a solid take. Thank you, Tony. And a great start. Dave, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to cost? Yeah, Tony lays out the expense ratio uh, perfectly. Uh, it, clearly, QDiv has got the lower expense ratio. I also look at spreads on this, and this is the difference between an $11 billion fund and QDIV, which has about $50 million. Uh, Noble trades at almost no spread at all. QDIV has a spread of about 29 basis points, so it is a pretty material difference. Now, that probably makes a bigger difference if you're trading a lot, uh, if you're just uh, buying and holding once or twice, it's probably not as big a deal. But if you take a look at the total cost, even with a higher expense ratio, Noble comes in lower. So I'm actually going to give the win to Noble in this one. That takes us next to exposure strategy. And Dave, you're still up. So break it down for us. What are the differences between these two ETFs and which of them stands out? Yeah, this is really a difference between a pure dividend growth strategy and a strategy that focuses on quality and yield, both within the S&P 500, as you mentioned. So uh, really have kind of uh, two disparate por portfolios here. Uh, the dividend aristocrats, ETF Noble, uh, obviously is looking for companies with a 25-year uh, dividend growth history. 
QDIV takes a little different approach. It's looking at a combination of both quality and high yield in selecting its portfolio, and it pulls out 200 of the top scoring names from the S&P 500. So uh, both portfolios are equal weighted, so you're really uh, getting two different, uh, two different completely, uh, completely different strategies here. The thing with Noble, I, I'm not the biggest fan of just pure dividend growth strategies because it really doesn't look at how well positioned those companies are at paying their dividends looking forward, even though, you know, with a company that's been doing it for two, three decades or more, it's probably going to keep paying it. I like QDIV's uh, quality approach to it, but I'm not a big fan of how thinly traded the fund is. And I I uh, don't really like the fact that it's got such a broad exposure, including 200 names. I, I'd like to see that narrowed down a little bit more. So I'm going to throw out a wild card. I'm going to throw out the Wisdom Tree U.S. Dividend Growth ETF. The ticker on that is DGRW. It uses the quality focus as well as the dividend growth uh, history. So I think it kind of combines the best of those two strategies. Uh, it does it very cheaply. Um, it weights according to aggregate dividends as opposed to market cap or equal cap weighting. So I kind of like that as well. And it's just got a better uh, track record overall. So I'm going to go with a wild card of DGRW in this category. Thank you very much, Dave. And you know I love wild cards, and that's a strong nomination. So we appreciate that. Tony, you're up next for Exposure Strategy. How do you see it? I fully agree with Dave. Uh, the problem with the dividend aristocrats is you have companies that will continue to pay a dividend despite having a high payout ratio just to maintain that status. And there's actually an interesting study out there that shows when a company enters a dividend aristocrats, their performance tends to plateau more. Um, and so when you compare these two indices, it's really dividend growth versus quality. And as Dave says, why not have both? So I would also put out DGRW as my wild card. Uh, so this ETF screens the broad wisdom tree dividend index. And it selects it based on a growth and quality factor composite ranking. For growth, we look at long-term earnings growth expectation. For quality, you look at his historical uh, three-year averages for ROE, return on equity, and return on assets. And as Dave mentioned, the important part of this index is that you're not using an arbitrary equal weight strategy, which I think is a really good way to trim your flowers and water your weeds for these. Instead, it's fundamentally weighted. That is, the company's are weighted to reflect your projected cash dividends that they're expected to pay in the coming year. And which, if you're going for a dividend strategy, it makes way more sense to do this fundamental way than go market cap or equal weight, both of which are very tenuously linked to what you're trying to get to. And as Dave mentioned, it's smoked both of these funds and it's actually beat the S&P 500. So I quite like it. It has a sector composition that also mirrors the broader index. So you're not deviating too far, but you're really picking out the best quality stocks that also grow their dividends at an above average rate. What's not the love? All right. That takes us next to performance and yield. And Tony, you're still up. So break it down for us. How do these ETFs look in this uh, particular category? So on a trailing basis from 2019 onwards, which is as far back as both the performance goes, uh, both uh, QDiv and Noble are about neck and neck um, in terms of total returns. Now, surprisingly, QDiv has been slightly more volatile with a higher standard deviation and a greater maximum drawdown, which was primarily due to what happened during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, this back test is so short that I wouldn't use it to draw any conclusions. If you're looking for yield, there are much better vibes out there than either of these. For instance, Noble's 30-day SEC yield is about 2.37. It's higher than the S&P 500, but you're not going to like turn any heads here, right? QDiv, uh, the 30-day SEC yield is slightly higher, 3.47. But once again, it's, it's nothing too notable if you're a yield chaser. There's better assets. You know, you have real estate investment trust. You have MLPs. You have even senior senior loans, right? So I, I would say it's a tie for me in terms of both performance and yield. It, the difference is immaterial. Okay. Got you down for a split decision. Thank you, Tony. Dave, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to performance and yield? Yeah, I see it pretty much the same. Like Tony said, the uh, performance is pretty similar. Uh, QDiv outperforms on the three-year, Noble outperforms on the five-year. It's just uh, kind of uh, splitting the difference there a little bit. And uh, he laid out the yields pretty well. Yeah, and I totally agree. I think there's, if you're looking just purely at yield, I think there's better options out there. I, I would probably, you know, just stick with 5% yielding treasury bills and just call it a day. Obviously, you don't get the upside, but... 
Um, if you're looking purely at yield, I think that's another good option too. Um, again, I would throw out DGRW as the as the wild card. Uh, you know, Tony mentioned right up top that it's performed a lot better. It's beaten the S and P 500. Uh, looking at these two funds over the last five years, it's outperformed by more than 300 basis points a year. So, I mean, it's a meaningful difference. The yield is lower on it. It's only about 1.8%. So, yeah, you're, you're not just you're not going to get too, too many people excited by that. Uh, but on a total return basis, it looks pretty good. Now, that's going to be due to the overweights in tech compared to these two funds. So, it, it's obviously where that where that performance is coming from. But... Um, it, again, I'm, I'm kind of uh, judging based on the strategy as well, but I think the historical return, the yield notwithstanding, I still pick DGRW as my winner here. That brings us next to the mystery battle category. This is where our judges can give us a, a certain factor or thing that they feel is crucial to today's contest. So, Dave, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? Yeah, I'm going to keep it simple here. My mystery category is going to be distribution frequency. And the reason I, I bring that up is because Noble pays its distributions and its dividends on a quarterly basis. QDiv pays it out on a monthly basis. Now, if you're not living off the dividends or you're not drawing them out of your portfolio, this may not make a big difference. But uh, a lot of people who invest in dividend ETFs for that regular income that the portfolio throws off. And if you're somebody who's in retirement or paying for something using these funds, having the income uh, coming in on a monthly basis and a quarterly basis might be more preferable for you. So uh, for that reason, I give the edge to QDiv here just because of the more regular stream of income that it provides. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? Mine is on uh, provider reputation and history. So first off, GlobalX and ProShares are amazing ETF companies, but neither of them are dividend experts. ProShares is known for leveraged funds. GlobalX is known for derivative income and thematic. Wisdom Tree, which offers DGRW, is the go-to for dividend investing. So one of their uh, main people who is you know, very influential starting the firm was no other than Jeremy Siegel. Uh, he wrote Stocks for the Long Run, and he's published a ton of research on dividend investing and value investing. And he was actually one of the people who helped develop the entire concept of fundamental indexing. That is creating indexes based on something else other than market capitalization, which is exactly what we see with DGRW. So if you are going to go the dividend quality and dividend growth route, why not do it with a firm that has proven expertise there, has actually executed this very well? Sure, DGRW has a high slant towards technology, and that's naturally a consequence of what that sector's become, a sector known for high-quality companies with robust cash flows, good ROE, and very, very strong dividend growth, but not high total dividends. And if you're a long-term investor, I would argue that makes much more sense than just trying to find the best yields or using, a honestly, a very arbitrary strategy of picking the uh, companies that have paid dividends for 25 years, because that's easily, very easily manipulated. Well, I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed the analysis of our judges up until this point. The question is, which of these dividend ETFs wins today's battle? Let's give our judges one final chance uh, to weigh in. Tony, give us your overall winner. Make it good. I wouldn't go with either Noble or QDiv. Uh, just solely because there are better options out there. They're fine funds on their own, but the dividend space is so competitive that it's really worth shopping around. Uh, so neither of these funds are really attractive to me as a dividend growth investor. My vote goes for DGRW, hands down. Well, you laid out your case, and we appreciate that. Dave, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Give it to us. Yeah, I completely agree. I would go with DGRW as well. Um, I... I like dividend growth strategies. I like strategies that follow, uh, that follow quality and yield, but I just don't think that you get a quality option with either of these funds individually. And, and like I mentioned earlier, I like DGRW's combination of uh, looking at quality metrics, uh, weighing by dividends, uh, its performance history. I, I think, like Tony said, it's just a better option out there. So DGRW is my winner as well. Well, our judges have weighed in, and according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is the wild card choice, DGRW, taking the victory. That's a Wisdom Tree dividend-focused ETF, and our judges agreed on that one. They uh, surprised me. I think this is probably one of the few battles we've had. Judges bring a wild card to the show 
that was the exact same ticker symbol. And they laid out their arguments quite well, favoring that fundamentally weighted approach. Of course, uh, DGRW may not have necessarily the highest dividend compared to the other two ETFs in today's contest. But nevertheless, when you look at the total return, uh, it is quite impressive. Also, that particular ETF, as our judges pointed out, has a heavy weighting towards technology, which is where those companies, that's where the growth has been in terms of uh, cash flow, as, w as well as RO ROE, return on equity, as well as uh, d dividend growth. So keep DGRW on your radar. And thank you, judges, for uh, bringing that one to our attention. Great job on today's program. We appreciate your timely insights. Thanks for having us, Ron. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got research links to both of our judges, so get in touch. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction. Well, how did you enjoy today's dividend showdown? Hit, hit us up in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts. Also, if there's a certain ETF contest you'd like to see, send me your ticker symbols. You could do that again in the comment section below or on our X feed at ETF Guide. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.